everybody's here for part 192. It's Photoshop and then part 192B, which is advanced. For you, it would be more of a directed studies. There are very few exercises that I can have you do, um, as we've done most of them in the introductory parts. But um, the projects that I give you can be tailored to your specific interests. Okay, they're a little bit more advanced. So, first thing that I want everybody to do today, because what I'm trying to do in my classes is to eliminate paper. So I try to put almost everything online and make it available for you online so that you have access to it 24-7. So what I'd like you to do is to you open up the browser, the computer, type in kmart66.com. And this is what you should see. So you know you're at the right place? There I am. Is there anyone who does not have an email address? Okay. Okay. The next thing that I'd like you to do is in here, which is enter your email address to subscribe. Let's go ahead and put in your email address and then click the subscribe button. So that when I make changes to this, you should be notified by email. And I'll show you why it's important. So this is the gateway to our class. <coughs> um, on my blog, I periodically will post little articles that I think are of interest. Um, articles that I've written, typically I include a little video or an image that I can talk about. <coughs> Anything from typography to scanning to properly setting up a file for the web or could be any number of things. Right? And that's not done on a regular basis. However, what you have at your disposal here <coughs> in the middle will be course classes and more specifically um, something that you should be logging on to every week is this week in class. And you'll see here will, will be where I have the videos. If I go here now, you can see what I did during the summer. These are the 15 lectures that I gave that are recorded. 
that are available and can click here, it opens up, you know, you have the lecture available here from the really crew, but it's here. But if you go to this week in class, it's really sort of a mini version of the syllabus. And on a weekly basis, for each of the classes that I teach, and I teach four, I will post what we'll be doing that week. I generally don't do it for the advanced folks. As I said, they're pretty much like independent studies in um, But here you'll notice, or on 92, Photoshop Digital Imaging on Monday, I'm just going to give an overview of what 92. There's no class work in here, but your assignment is to purchase the textbook and materials, and I will talk about that. Next. So, you don't have to put pencil and paper and to write down the textbook and know what one you need. I have made it available for you here. It's Adobe Photoshop Class from the book. It actually should read, I need to edit that. It's Adobe Photoshop CS3 Class from the book. And it looks like this. You can buy it at the bookstore, or you can buy it at Amazon.com, or you can buy it at Barnes & Noble, or any number of bookstores that carry it. It's uh, pretty easy, you know, readily available to almost anywhere. It lists for $55. Now, if you buy it at the bookstore, they will charge you $55. For those of you on um, student assistance or, you know, you're getting some sort of <coughs> financial aid, they may make you buy it at the bookstore. But if somebody else is paying the tab, then I guess that's the way it goes, you know. Um, but if you are counting your pennies, as I count mine, <coughs> then one of the places you might want to go would be just click on this link right here. So notice when you roll over it, you see it just highlights in red. And that when you get the finger, that indicates a link. And you just click, and that will send us to Amazon. And there you go. You can just add this to your shopping cart, and you can buy it. Okay, that's one way to do it. So that's one thing that you will need. And you need to get this sooner rather than later. You really need to have it by the end of the week. Um, if you choose to buy it through Amazon, um, they do charge shipping. And if you choose by ground, you'll probably have it. If you order it later today or tomorrow, you should have it by the end of the week. Or maybe by, at least by the weekend. Okay. So that's the only book that you need for this class. Um, you do need a flash drive. Everybody familiar with those? Anybody not? Have, um, this goes into the USB port. It can go on the side of the keyboard. It can go in front of your computer. All of these Macs are equipped with um, um, USB and FireWire ports in the front. Just plug in. And this is where you will save all of your files. You will save the exercises that you will do in class on here. And you will save the files that you or the for the assignments that I will give you in this class. So we do a series of exercises from the book. So this is the prescriptive approach to education, cookbook style. Follow you know, lessons one through whatever, you know, one, you know, A, B, C, D, and ta-da, you know, it's kind of like a cooking show. You know, like put all the ingredients together and voila, you have cookies, or you have a cake, or you have something. But well, they provide a lot of the information for you. And then periodically, about four times, we have four or five assignments. I have um, assignments that you'll see shortly that were basically your tests. Since there are no written exams in this class, this is your test where you put together every, you know, everything that you've learned so far. Um, the reason that you don't say any of your files on the computer is that it could very well be that when you come back, they will be gone. Um, especially if you leave them on the desktop. They install a program called Deep Freeze, which every time, what it does, every time you reboot the computer, 
it puts it back to an original condition. So that means if there's anything that was saved on the desktop, it just goes away. It's deleted. <clears throat> um, I forgot to mention to my class this morning, and I will say now, part of your lab fees go towards blank CDs. And all of these computers have CD rooms. So weekly, my recommendation would be to take all the files that you've done and burn them on a CD. CD's free, you know, label it. Now you have an archive. You have it in here. And if this fails, then you still have it on a CD. So these aren't going to fail. Um, and then the last thing is a notebook. Just something to take some. So that's all you need to do. Okay. Um, how many of you are PC users and how many of you are Mac users? PC. How many of you are? Oh, well, no. um, How many of you have um, Photoshop at home? No. Okay. And I can give you that much more work to do. <coughs> um, it's fundamentally the same. Either platform. If you are not used to the, how to do something on a Mac, I assume that you do. The only thing that I will make sure that you know how to do is just properly save the files so that you don't lose them and say, oh, no, I did it, I did it, I did it, I can't find it. Um, the other thing in, the, in Photoshop or Illustrator or any, pretty much any other program, the only difference is these days between Mac and PC, typically are the key commands. Um, on, the, on the Macintosh, we'll say, okay, the save is command S. Or it's, it, what it is is the key at the bottom with Apple on it. And on the PC, it would be control S. So, you know, minor differences like that. Instead of the control key, the Mac will use the command key, the alt key, or the option key, the fundamentally the same. So that's really the, the main difference. Everything else, the interface will look identical when you're on and if you're working here and you take your files home, you should be able to open up, open them up on your, your, your PC just fine. These are, you know, when we used to use zip drives and things like that, they were fat formatted for the Mac before they were the PC. Well, it's not the case anymore. These are generic. You can plug them in any computer and the files should open and be saved properly on either platform or the computer. So there shouldn't be a problem with them. So every week, um, Sunday night usually, is when I post what we'll be doing. And really all it is is an, it reflects what we're doing, or what I have on my syllabus, which is also available online. Um, where it will differ is that I, based on the dynamic of the class, I will pace my class accordingly. So if, on certain, in certain areas we can speed up, in other areas I might have to slow down or go backwards and review a little bit and then move forward. So based on what we've accomplished in a particular week, um, that weekend I will post what we should be working on, when projects are due, um, what exercise you should be working on, and so on and so forth. Okay? So that's why I recommend that you go ahead and not recommend that you should require and subscribe to it. I post a little article on Sunday night and you'll get notification and remind you. But even if I, you don't get anything, just go there Monday morning or something like that and you'll know what you should be doing for the week and when projects are due. Okay. Um, and I pointed out the lectures that will be available. Um, we're good because I have several to do. It won't be posted as quickly as I, as I would like. Um, but within the week, so it you know, should be a few days, within a few days. Um, if you want to know anything about me, then th these will take you to my website, the home. You know, if you're wondering why do I use Kmart, my biography and my resume, which lists my, you know, education, experience, and things like that. And samples of my own personal work here. What is important for you, and as well as emailing, so that's important for you. This week in class is important for you. And also, Kirk's classes. That is extremely important to all of you. 
with this, when you click here, it takes you to another website. And so it tells you my title here, gives you my voicemail. I put it in there, but don't call. Um, I don't even remember the password to my voicemail. And my office is right there. I never use it. I'm always at a computer, day and night. So the best way to get in touch with me is by email. And here is my uh, Stratos email. Um, office hours, I'm usually here early in the morning. So that's the best time to get a hold of me or grab me before I leave after the park. That would be another good one. Now, you'll notice at the top we have handouts, which I'll go to in a minute. Artwork, podcasts. Um, podcasts and broadcasts are in the works. The podcasts, um, the school has signed up for um, iTunes University, and I should be able to feed my lectures to them and make them available. But I haven't been communicating with them lately, so that's sort of iffy. Broadcasts, um, I'm not getting any cooperation from the school, but what I would really like to do, this is my goal, is to, instead of recording with a video camera, have a live feed so that you could be anywhere and you could view my lectures and then when I'm done with them, they would be recorded and available for you. That's right. And that is doable. That's currently technology. It's not a big deal. But if you were to talk to computer services here, you know, it's a big deal. That's what I'd really like to do. In the meantime, though, we go to artwork, you can see some samples of the kinds of projects you'll be doing in this class. Um, the first group were from my art um, 186 for Illustrator class. These in here are from my Photoshop class. Um, you'll notice something a little bit more graphic oriented, 2D, flat, um, posterized. CD cover. Nobody buys CDs anymore. Um, but just the same. Let me move ahead. Um, another CD. Let's move ahead. It's the back. It's the front. Um, no one has VHS anymore, but still, you get the idea. This could be for a DVD cover. Um, so not only are you working with images, but you're working with type and that sort of thing. Yep. I'll go down to this, down to this side. Um, let's go back. Let's go back here. Start here, kmark66.com. Then click on Perks Classes. That makes you really worry it on another website now. And then if you click on Artwork, it's, it's not my artwork, it's a sample. These are samples of student work. Um, this is one assignment that I'll probably give you, my only advanced student, and it's the invisible, I call it the invisible man project, where you take an existing photograph or scan of artwork, and your job is to digitally erase every part where you see flesh. And leave it when you're done so it looks completed. And you'll notice that, I mean, it looks easy enough, but remember, where the hand was, he had to rebuild the chair, and, and where her veil is, or her, her head is covered, he had to build in a shadow on here and make all of that look good. So some photographs lend themselves more than others do. And that would be more of an advanced project. Okay. Um, another good one, posters. Posters can be that will get to later in the semester. You can put together your talents and your creativity. Um, sometimes it can be done commercially. It can be done for a movie. Or perhaps it could be a public announcement sort of poster. It depends. So we try to use put together commercial type applications of, of the program when we're done from retouching to posters and things of that nature. This was a beautiful one too. Um, I'll show you. 
Okay. Are those the kinds of projects that you want to do, or are you not sure? Or if there's something that you want to do, and it falls, and it's close to what we're doing, you know, I don't mind if you, you're off a little bit, you just need to talk to me. And I might say, you know what, we're going to do that later, so hold off, or, you know, let's tweak it a little bit, customize it. Um, I want you to be working on projects that you can really jump into and you know, sink, sink your teeth in um, and, and have fun with them. Because many of these do take a bit of time to finesse and make sure that they come out nice. So, um, you know, if I give something that's too restrictive, I find that, you know, many students drag their heels because it's not a subject that's not of interest to them. Okay, so I'm trying to you know, specific but broad enough, we're going to do a poster. So at least you have to deal with poster format. You want to do a movie poster? Okay, there's certain elements that you need to, to consider when you're doing a movie poster for maybe it's for a lost dog. I don't know. I don't, it could be anything. There's still principles we need to follow. And a poster is a poster is a poster. You know, and being creative is being creative. It doesn't put in that the subject is. Okay. Any questions so far? No? So Photoshop CS3, we'll do a variety of, as I say, we do <coughs> not quite all of the exercises in the book. And um, you'll see when I'll post this weekend, um, I'll say, okay, these are the exercises we're going to do this week. And I tend to jam a bunch of them up in the early in the semester so you can get up to speed quickly. Um, so I'll start the day off by lecturing and demonstrating, and sometimes I will follow the, the exercise almost to the letter, and other times I will veer off and say, this is how I would do it. Or maybe here are some things, I'll just cover basic principles, um, because it's a short one, uh, a short exercise, maybe here's some things that they didn't cover in here that I think we should know about. This would be a good time to tell you about. And then, it's lab time, and then you can do the exercises when you're done with them. You check them off, or you tell me that you're done, and I check them off. And when I talk about grades in a little bit, you'll see that collectively they do add up. Yeah. We don't print them out. I don't give you a letter grade individually. I just check to see what you've done. <coughs> the assignments that we do, these that you're looking at right here, um, there is a format that you follow that you do print them, you do turn them in, you put them on a CD and everything, and I do grade them and hand them to so them. We have, I give you a little slip of paper with an individual critique, and then under ideal conditions, I like having three critiques. But it's kind of hard if everybody's working on grades. Okay? So this is the practical, you know, hands on side to learn how to use the program. The nuts and bolts, and this is the fun side to actually put to use the thing that you learn in a practical way. And if you're, you know, more fine art or fine art oriented, more power to you. If you have some ideas that you want to um, approach, you know, approach me with them, then let me know because there's lots of things that can be done. So, because I was trained as a commercial artist and worked as an illustrator for many years, but my passion is fine art, and that's what my master's degree is in. And that's for the past 20 some years I've done. I don't do commercial anymore except in extreme situations. But that's sort of how I gear it. But it doesn't have to be, because I do it for my own personal work. For my own personal work it doesn't look anything like that. You see more. Right. Um, let's talk about um, anybody. Would, would anyone like to purchase the software? I think you might want to purchase it. Okay, doke. Um, on this page, handouts, I have a number of links, of my favorite links, and some that you, for my web class to go to for inspiration, or tools for my web class. But over here, there are three links. One is Creation Engine, the other is USCollegeby.com, and the third one is JourneyEd. 
Adobe software, uscollegebuy.com is by far the best price that you can get anywhere. So let's go there. We click here. It sends you to computer Silicon Valley. And if we click right here, where it says Adobe Student License Program, where it says click here, and then click here, it takes us here. There are two premium packages, so one master collection and the other is a design premium package. One for Mac or one for PC. Th this package at $314 is a bargain. If we click on this link, what you get is InDesign CS3, you get Photoshop CS3, you get Illustrator CS3, you get Acrobat Professional 9, you get Flash, you get Dreamweaver, and do you get anything else? I'm not sure. I think that's enough. All of that for $314. Are we going to do any, all of those in this class? No, just, photo, just Photoshop. But when you buy them individually, you'll see why do I want to spend $200 or $100? You know, or almost $200 on Photoshop here. Photoshop extended $180. Why do I want to spend $180? Why do I have all of those for $314? It just doesn't make any sense. Even if you remotely think you might be interested in that other software, it would be useful to have. And I'm not sure what this master collection has in it. Click on there, and that's a bit more money. But for $314, that is a bargain. And they've just made it recently available for faculty as well. It's only available to students. You're only supposed to use it for student purposes. You're not supposed to use it for commercial purposes. That's the agreement. You know the license agreement that you click OK. And it says you've read and agreed to these terms, and no one ever reads and agrees to the terms. Um, so just to let you know. And they are, comp it is, uh, it's not a uh, restricted form of the software or a limited form. It is the complete package. So everything is there. So that is for if you're interested in buying the software for this class, that's where I would go. It's the, you won't find a better deal anywhere else. It's some special deal that was made with colleagues. If you are, sometimes if you need to go to Adobe's website, um, it's useful there. This is where I'm going now, rating and syllabi. And when you click there, it has curriculum classes, and you'll notice classroom procedures for my classes are universal. And then I posted the syllabus for each of the classes that I teach. And these are tweaked a little bit. That's why this week in class, I think, is better. But you'll, it will give you a basic overview of what we're going to do. Um, each of these are PDF files. So if you're using a, a, a browser like Safari, and I click on Download Classroom Procedures, it will download and it will automatically launch Acrobat Reader and open it. In other browsers, it doesn't always do that. So you may have little, you know, glitches, but it should be available to everybody. Okay. So first things first. Um, I'm not going to cover all of these in, in detail. You should look them over. Some of them are boilerplate, but I will cover the basics. Like number one, no smoking, smoking, eating, or drinking in class. I allow you to break two of the rules. Just you can't smoke in your drink. But you can if you if you want to bring a drink as long as it has a lid. And don't put it on your desktop, set it on the floor. So if it tips over and it spills, we only ruin the carpet. Okay. And if you eat, um, because you know, you just came from work and didn't have time to eat lunch or something like that. That's okay with me. We have wipes and that sort of thing to clean up so keyboards are clean. 
Um, but be careful so you don't lean over the potato chips and they get in the keyboard and stuff like that. Okay? Just use common sense and we seem to have, in my classes anyway, we have had very good luck. Now that I'm tape recording this and putting it on public record, I'm not supposed to tell you. <laughs> Because you'll notice everywhere it says no cell phones, no drinks, no this, no that. Um, I spend a lot of time in here, and here I am with my tea in the morning, in the afternoon, or I have my lunch. I have maybe a half hour break between classes, and I'm eating, so it seems kind of silly to say that you can. And by following those basic rules, we seem to have worked, everything has worked out okay. And, if, you know, I, I remind you that if I don't see a lid where I see it up on the table to put it down on the floor. And all of you kind of ask, tell one another too if you see somebody. It, it's not a big deal. You know. Even with the lid on, because then sometimes you forget to tie, turn it down tight, and then it accidentally tips and then dribbles all over. And, you know, more than half um, Number three. Number three is important. Obviously, coming to class with your books and all that sort of stuff is important. But to pace your work, because I know later in down here, I say that I that if, that if um, work is late, I deduct points, and if you're tardy, I deduct points and stuff. I don't do that anymore. But it is important because I will have posted on my blog. This is what we're working on. This is one thing to do. And I will tell you, and you'll be reminded there that this is one thing to do, and you turn them in. But if you're not careful, and if you do need an extra week to work on something, be my guest. You know, because I'd rather that you do good work rather than turn it in just to be turning it in. But be mindful of the time that passes, because for every every day that passes that you're, you know, extending the deadline of a project. Um, that means that you're taking away time from the next project. Um, in order to, to work with that, there is a lab class that's available prior to this, no, it's on Tuesdays and Thursdays from 11 to 12.30, here and in the next class that John Doyle offers. And if you want to get, for a unit of credit, um, three more hours of lab time in, you're welcome sign up for if you don't or aren't able to work at home. So it's important that you um, that you pace yourself um, and try to stay on track of where I'm. If the class needs to speed up or the class needs to slow down, then that's what I will do. Um, Cell phone etiquette. I know it says everywhere you're not supposed to have cell phones, but you know what? They're a part of our culture. They're a part of the life right now. So the only thing that I ask, and I sometimes make a mistake myself, is to put it on vibrate. So that's the style. So if you get a call, you know, no problem. Just take it, leave, you know, go outside, take your call when you're done, come back in, and it's fine. It seems to work fine for everybody. Um, I just think that makes perfect sense. Um, I am supposed to uh, drop any of you who are here or are not here, like six consecutive absences or something like that. Um, it is my responsibility, but I would appreciate from you if there are changes in your schedule. Um, whereas you, you can't drop and maybe your work schedule has changed or something, just email me and I'll take care of it. Um, or if you've been away for some time and you think, gee, I, you might drop me um, and you don't want to be dropped, email me and sure. So emailing me is the best way to stay in touch with me. But and that's the best thing to do is to communicate with me. So if you're having problems with a class, with a specific assignment, talk to me. You can talk to me before class, you can talk to me after class, you can make an appointment with me, you can see me early in the morning, <coughs> you can email me in order to be able to My grading policy, again, um, a lot of this is in here, 
because it has to be. But as I said, we don't deduct for late projects or for absences or anything anymore. So we can disregard that. I use a point system, a very simple point system. Zero through 10. So if you did a seven on a, on a project, that's not a C, that's a solid B. You can see there. And you can always revise projects for a regrade. So especially if you have the software at home and you're not happy with your project, then I specify on that. the slip that I give you, these are the areas that need to be improved, and you improve them, you can just resubmit it, and then you can get a, you know, a revised grade. Um, we have approximately four projects, maybe five. They are all equally rated, weighted, and that includes the final project, which is a retouch project. I, for the final project I have, you get an old photograph. You know, rummage through your parents' box of photos and find one of grandma or great grandpa when they immigrated you know, to the United States and it's all bent and crackly and everything. And your job is to scan it and retouch it. <coughs> um, that I don't have in, in samples on there because it's. They look pretty neat when you compare, compare them side by side, but if you just have a picture of someone's grandma, it's like, why is that there on your website? You know, it's kind of wrong. But it's a, it, that was why Photoshop was developed in the first place. It took the place of, of traditional retouchers. It has become much more than that, as I'm sure you're all aware. There's a lot you can do. There's some beautiful different you know, illustrators do some wonderful stuff with it. Um, there's a lot of nifty things that you can do with it. But that was its original function. And my feeling is, I guess because of my traditional education and art education, is that if you know the fundamentals, um, that will open up a lot of opportunity for you if you allow yourself to continue to be creative. I don't want that to squash your creativity. But if you have a firm grasp of all of the tools and you don't have to think about what tools you're using and how to use them and they become second nature to you then I think that will free you up. So that's why I have you focus on fundamentals with these exercises. Does that make sense? Um, so each of those assignments are equally weighted. So if there's four of them and you get you know A's on all of those, you know, a 10 out of 10 then that would be an average of 10 you know, on those four, and you have an A. With the exception of exercises. All of these in total, you know, all of these, after I check them all off, and there are like 12 of them. And in fact, I give you like the first couple in here because some of them were an overview of the, of the program, and that's what I will cover Wednesday. We'll just give you the grand tool. And again, you can follow them along, or you can just sit back and watch it all depends on so that's one that I check off that everybody needs a freebie. So there's basically 10 you have to do. Each of those are worth a point. So you do all 10, you get 10 points on one project, you get an A. It's amazing at the end of the semester, though, how many people don't do them. They have checked off at least a big chunk of them. And that's, that's a free A as far as I'm concerned. And, and it's something that's necessary anyway, just to know how to use the program. It's, it's kind of like an onion, and you know, on the surface it looks pretty simple and not too complex, and you can use it that way. It's a very basic tool, but the more you learn about it, the more you know how to use layers and different kinds of tool uh, type effects and things like that. It's amazing what you can do with this thing. And then, um, as I say, I think that will open up and will think of more things that will make you more creative in that regard. Um, because you won't let your mind limit the possibilities. You'll say, gee, I remember seeing that, or I remember being able to do that. What if I do that? What if I try that? So that's it. That's how I grade. Any questions about that? No? If you want to see a sample of exercises, um, what you can do, you can do Stay this this website, or even you can even go back. Um, it doesn't matter. 
if I were to click here, Part 1 and 92 assignments, can you click there? Um, now, scanning basics and type basics are not assignments, but they're here because they're a fundamental part of the class. But I do talk about type, and I do talk about some important um, principles when you scan images using a flatbed scanner. Or if you take images off the internet, what does that mean? You know, can you use them for print? Um, in most cases, you cannot. They're just, they don't have it. Aside from the fact of copyright issues, they just don't have high enough resolution. You know? But there are places you can go, like Flickr, that where um, people post their, their digital images in a variety of sizes. And they've adopted Creative Commons copyright um, format. And many of them will allow you to use them. The only time that you can't and you need to talk with them is if it's for commercial purposes that you need to share in the, in the money, revenue. So if we look down here, let's find um, let's cover. Here's the final project, assignment four. It's final project restore slash refetch photograph and you click there. It's just like the other, it's a PDF file. And it's pretty straightforward, I think. And I show the sample to try to and give you a basic description of what we have. And these can be printed out, or you can leave them online. And the syllabus is there also. So you can, that's for an 18-week term. And it basically describes each week what we're going to do. And it, for the most part, follows this. And periodically, like I say, for four or five exercises, okay, then we do an assignment. And then while you're working on the assignment, I do a handful more. You know, I continue with the, the exercises. Um, so you build up the skills, and then we do another assignment, so on and so forth. That's how I work with this class. Thank you. 